Hello, this is CBRadioMagazine.com, and today we're going to take a look at the President McKinley USA single sideband radio. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of radio reviews in the last bit, and I apologize for that. I've been uh, on the road quite a bit, haven't had a lot of opportunity. And the second reason was that there just wasn't a whole lot of new radios coming out. The industry works like that. You have uh, little bursts where they'll release a bunch of new radios from different manufacturers, and then you'll have the lulls where there isn't a whole lot happening, and that's uh, basically what the last couple of years have been like. But today we're going to take a look at this radio. This is the President McKinley USA. It's a single sideband AM radio based for the U.S. market. This radio is type accepted by the FCC, so it is a legal CB radio. It's not an export radio. It's not going to be a 10 meter frequency type radio. It will. I will point out that it has a 12 volt, 24 volt switching system on it that uh, you can switch in between. For those of you who aren't familiar, there are a lot of vehicles do run off 24 volts. Uh, not as familiar in the U.S. market for that, but you'll see that in U.S. military vehicles run on 24 volt. A lot of larger vehicle buses in the mining industry where I used to work. A lot of the, the vehicles in the mining industry run on 24 volt excavators, things like that, and construction. So interesting feature for that. I think it's neat that they included that. I think it expands their market a little bit rather than the 12 volt uh, consumer market or driver market uh, exclusively. So let's open this radio. We'll take a look. I'll walk through it for you, um, and we'll see what we think. All right, guys, we've opened up the box, got the radio set up, and we'll walk through the features here. Um, when I do turn it on, you'll see that these buttons illuminate on the front of the radio. Some of them are going to look a little blown out in terms of color, a little white almost, and that's just a function of my camera. Uh, in real life, just so you know, these are all going to be just the whatever color of the screen that's selected. They'll be nice. They aren't as bright as they appear on the camera, so a little disclaimer there. Starting on the right side, we've got our microphone. It's a six pin standard President connector, similar to the President George, President Lincoln. Does work with their Liberty wireless microphone. Also should work with the Unit in 980 uh, wireless microphone as well. This is your volume control on the inside of this knob and on the outside is your squelch control. The volume control is also your on off for the radio. I will turn the radio on for you. And then you can see, I can turn it up and down. Volume control on the inside knob, squelch control on the outside. This radio does come equipped with President's automatic squelch control. You'll see a little ASC label here just below. If you move the squelch all the way down into that position and you are in AM mode, the ASC symbol will come up on the display. And the automatic squelch control basically works the standard way squelch would, but it finds the signals that are going to be strong enough to break the squelch, and it has its own criteria the way it sets it. It does a pretty good job. Uh, however, for those of you who want to set your squelch manually, you would just um, turn it up until it hits a point where the squelch uh, blocks out the sound, and then if there's a strong enough signal, it will break the squelch. Moving over to the left side, we've got a front firing speaker. Something you haven't really seen since like the Cobra 18 uh, WX2 back in the day. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of front firing speakers. Since this radio is a DIN size designed to be placed in dash if you want to install it where your stereo would be. Uh, and we've had quite a few radios lately that were this size where you could install them in your dash. Fantastic to make your install in your car look clean. Most of those radios had a speaker located on the bottom of the radio, which isn't so good when it's installed inside your dash. Inside your dash, all that sound goes down and gets muffled and you can't really hear anybody. So for all the radios I was testing where I was installing them in the dash, I had to have an external speaker hooked up so I could hear anything. The front firing speaker on this radio is quite good, quite loud, really good tone quality. Um, so I'm actually excited to stick this in the vehicle and give it a shot. Uh, I think this will be a really useful feature. If you're a driver and you have to, you know, mount this in your headliner up above, I don't think it's going to affect anything. Um, really, I think you'll still be able to get a good enough sound loudness out of this speaker. It's a lot louder, in fact, in terms of volume than my uh, President Lincoln 2 in terms of the audio level coming out of the speaker. So I'm impressed with it so far, and we'll see how it does once I get in the car on the road. Um, you can see the buttons here, as I mentioned, are a little white and blown out. In person, they are green. Um, you can see the color of the one over here. They're all that color. That's just my camera. Apologize for that. 
continuing on here, the knob right here, the two knobs you'll see, the inside is your fine clarifier, the outside is your coarse clarifier. Uh, for those that you aren't aware, a clarifier helps you tune in signals when you're running on sideband. Uh, the coarse clarifier makes larger adjustments, the fine clarifier makes more fine tune adjustments. The coarse clarifier does have a center position slot, which is nice. A lot of people do ask about that. Below this is your channel changing knob, and you can see I can quickly get through the channels. It has a nice feel to it. It's not going to be super solid compared to like a Cobra 29 was in the old fashioned uh, radios, but for a digital radio, it's nice solid. It clicks, which is nice. It is also going to be a menu function button when you press it, and I will show you that in a little bit further on. The buttons across the front here. Most of these buttons are going to have two functions. Some will have three functions. It's actually pretty simple once you get it figured out. It takes a little bit of going, but definitely less buttons than some other radios we've messed with. First button is your mode control. That is your AM or upper sideband or lower sideband modes for where you want to listen and talk. Um, it also serves as your PA function. If you do a long press, you'll see the PA comes on. And it also has a Vox feature for voice activated transmissions where you can talk through your microphone hands-free basically without keying it. Your voice triggers the radio. And we did do a little testing with that and it seemed to work all right. Um, I'll show you how to initiate that in just a second. Next button over is your weather channel button. This radio is a sideband radio and it does have weather frequencies. You can press that button once to go in and select your frequency for... Northeast 06, season 1, foot shot with a low easterly swell. Tree knots, Saturna, temperature 17, wind southwest, pour dimanche, ensoleillé, maximum... And it's picking up quite a lot. I'm even getting the French... Uh, Stations there up north coming in so you can see the transmission strength on there for the station Very strong for all of these. There's a couple stations where I didn't hear anything But out of these seven stations, there's only two that I didn't get a station So that's actually quite good for a weather station. You can see there's an alert function up here if I long press this that turns on or Off when I leave the weather you can see that the alert still stays on um, That is something through the weather service if there is an alert tornado um, storm warning, something like that. They do send a tone through that will alert you and let you know, and then you can go in and check your weather station, listen more, or find out what that warning is all about. The secondary function, or I said third function on this one, is your memory channel below. It says M1, M2, M3, and all of these. This radio does have the ability to store up to three uh, frequencies or channels. Um, and the mode. It will remember the mode, which is nice. So I'll show you that as well in just a second. Moving over here, we've got a noise blank, ANL, and high cut function. Um, and this will give you the ability to run nothing, noise blank, ANL, or high cut, or you can run both together. The noise blank ANL is good for getting rid of some of that electrical noise you may get in your vehicle. The high cut is good for getting rid of some of that high end hiss. Uh, if you're having a little trouble hearing stations or you, you know, want to tone it down just a little bit, it cuts out some of that upper hiss, uh, which can be nice on sideband as well. The secondary function on this one is a scan function. <clears throat> so if you hold this down, long press it, it'll go into the scan. It will scan through all of your channels. It'll do that when you have the squelch up. Um, if something breaks the squelch, it will stop on that channel that's breaking the squelch. Most of you guys uh, know how that works. If you're not familiar with it, um, you may want to read up a little bit more on how squelch functions work. And the other thing you can do is you can make it scan down or up. really doesn't make a difference. It goes through fast, which is nice. Some scan features are a little slow. This one's very fast, so if there is someone that's going to break the squelch, you will hear them pretty quickly. The, um, to get out of the scan, you just hold down the button again for the long press. Next button is the 919 button. And I'm starting to get to the point these days with the hobby side of the radio that 919 button really isn't that useful in terms of going to an emergency channel. You know, back in the days, it's a holdover from the old days of CB when we used to have react stations that would be listening when there was an emergency. These days, uh, there really isn't anybody monitoring channel nine, there might be hopefully local law enforcement or someone 
Uh, I don't know if you're going to raise anybody on that, but it does have a 19 option as well. So you can press to go to channel 9 emergency, channel 19 emergency, and if you press it the third time, it goes back out to your normal frequency that you were on. The uh, 19 would might be great for truckers on the road. It does also have a secondary function, if you hold it down, which is a dual watch function. As you can see, I was on channel 27, and now it's doing a dual watch between 27 and channel 9. And if we oops, go back out, if we hold it down, and oops, we can select the channel for the dual watch. And you can also have it switch between another channel and 19. So your dual watch is kind of limited. You can either do it with the channel you select in channel 9 or the channel you select in channel 19. Uh, for drivers, again, that could be useful if they have two channels they like to roll on. I would have kind of preferred to be able to set it dual watch, say, between uh, a lower sideband frequency and another AM frequency. But we don't really have that option on this radio. But, you know, it still serves a dual watch function if that's something you're looking for, as long as you're wanting to listen to 9 or 19. Next over, we've got a uh, couple of functions on this button. It's kind of your memory and also a function button for getting into some of your controls, mic gain, uh, RF gain, uh, sorry, RF power, power, and your RF gain. It has a lock, first of all, so if you long press it, you'll see a lock function come up. If you press it again, It'll lock you out. Uh, the lock function basically makes sure you can't change any channels. The channel selector won't work when the lock function is on. You're not going to press something by accident. Secondary function for this one is the memory function. So if I pre quick press it once and I select our M1 button, it pulls up channel 38 lower sideband. If I do a quick press again and go to our number two memory uh, location button, we've got number uh, channel 6 AM and my third one will be channel 11. Now, if you want to store a frequency, what you do is you go to the frequency you want to store. Let's say, for instance, this channel one I want to store in this third position. You will press the quick press the memory button and then hold down on the button and then it'll start blinking M3. You can see here M1, M2, M3. And now channel one will be saved. And if I go back, channel one's now saved in our third memory position. So that's a neat feature to be able to switch between frequencies. It does remember the mode, as I said, so you can go quickly from AM to lower sideband if you have a favorite lower sideband frequency. And the other function on this, if you hold it down, it will, oops, sorry. If you hold it down, it puts the lock on. I did this wrong. If you, oops, now I need to hold it down long enough to remove the lock. If you are keyed up on the radio and you hold it down, it takes you to talk back. You see that flashing up there? You can control the talk back level. One, two, oops, a little bit too loud there. One, two, three, four, five. And it goes all the way up to nine, which is quite loud. Um, and when I unkey, you'll see now the talk back is enabled at whatever the level was that you set it. So again, you have to press the microphone and then hold down on that button, the talkback now is off. Interesting that it has the talkback there. I wasn't sure if it was gonna have talkback on this radio when I initially saw it. If you run an echo or other things on your echo microphone, you wanna hear yourself, yes, you can turn on your talkback and set it and then turn it back off or run with it if you so please. The other option on this one, um, you can see that it says mic gain, RF gain down here. If you are keyed up and you press the button once, you'll see it now says RF power and you'll see the RF power is flashing down below. So I can turn it down using the channel changing button or I can turn it back up. If I quick press it again, it shows my microphone gain. I can turn that down or turn it back up. The variable power is nice in that you can set it down to about one watt. Perfect for running an external box uh, if that's what you're choosing to do or you can turn it back up to uh, full power, which is about four watts. Um, there's also a RF gain feature on here as well. Um, there, if you press it, if you quick press this twice, it will show up the RF gain and you can adjust that as well. So there's not quite as many knobs on this radio as there might be on an older standard style CB. 
Uh, it's very clean looking. Looks more like uh, like a Motorola radio, business radios we used to use <clears throat> back in the day. And you know they've incorporated the mic gain, RF power, and the RF gain all into one button and using your channel selector. Most of those things, unless you're messing with them all the time, it's kind of nice. You don't need the knobs because you just set it and then can forget it. Now, I'll show you the menu functions, which are kind of interesting. Uh, if you press this button once, it takes you into color changing, blue, orange, or green. You can choose color on this radio. There's only three colors. Uh, I know a lot of radios recently have had a plethora of colors to choose from. This one has three. If you really don't like any of these three, well, tough, but it should be enough for you. It has a dimmer control. You can go down to zero if you don't want any light at all. You can go all the way up to nine. Also has a contrast. You can turn down the contrast of the display. Um, I usually run the contrast max and the light at max. I don't know what situation in particular where I wouldn't want to do that. The key beep. This is whenever you press buttons on the radio, it beeps. This is you can turn it on or off. So if we turn it on, and we leave our menu and we're back out to the normal radio functions, every time you change the channel, it's going to beep. Every time you press a button, it's going to beep. Um, I know this was kind of an annoyance on the Uniden when it came out, uh, the 980. So yes, you can turn this off. Next one is the Roger beep. You can turn your Roger beep on or off. I will warn you, I saw another video online, someone else had done also a review of this uh, radio, and they discovered as they were doing the radio that the Roger Beep didn't work very well. It is not very loud. I went into testing this radio, I discovered the same thing. So it's not specific to their radio, it is a problem with the radio itself. The Roger Beep is super, super quiet to the point where I asked some other stations during testing, can you hear the Roger beep? And they said, you have a Roger beep on? I can't hear it. Yes. So you may hear it beep through your radio. You'll be the only one. Let you know when your transmission is ended. Uh, but traditionally, a Roger beep on CB bands are used to let other stations know that your transmission has ended. Not really going to work that well on this one. I've actually let President know, so hopefully they're working on it. Uh, they have a fix or something for modifying radios out there, or they may have a fix at the factory for future radios. Uh, for those guys that hate Roger Beeps, there you go. No one's going to hear the Roger Beep on this radio. <laughs> I will keep going along here in the menu functions, and we have an SWR feature. This is kind of an interesting one. The SWR functions, normally on old radios, you used to have to calibrate it on the meter, um, some of them had an auto SWR feature where you would key up and then it would show you what your SWR was. In this particular case, you set it to this. You don't have to key the microphone. The radio starts keying itself automatically. And it is going to show us a number here. And that number is going to tell us what our SWR is. Um, I'm actually going to unscrew my coax a little bit to the point where it's not making a very good connection. And as I do that, you'll see, oh no, my SWR has gone up or changed as I've disconnected. It's telling me that's really bad. 2.6. And the other thing you'll hear as I'm going to turn this back up uh, on the volume, it makes a steady tone when your SWR is good. You can hear it beeping. When it beeps really slow, that means your SWR is really bad. When it starts beeping a little quicker, it means your SWR is good. And when it goes to a steady tone, that means your SWR is perfect where the radio should be. Um, funny thing about that, it just reminds me of like a flatline patient dying. But apparently, if your SWR is good, you'll be flatlining. So that's the sound you can listen for. Kind of a easy to use feature, which is nice. Um, so that's kind of fun. And the last thing I will show you in the menu functions is the tone control. You can set it to negative five, all the way up to five, or you can leave it at zero. <clears throat> tone control adjusts the pitch or tone of the voices and the incoming signals. So if somebody is really nasally and whiny and you want them to sound a little better, you can turn it down to a lower tone, cut out the high pitch, or you can do the opposite. If somebody is really low, you can turn it the other way. Uh, from listening for sideband purposes, I actually found having the tone up pretty high made stations the most, uh, you know, uh, audible on the air. 
in that sense. So that function is there as well. Uh, I will show you a couple other things real quick. The menu function, when we're in there, if we do the scan function while we're in the memory um, section, while we have it set to a memory function, it will scan through your three saved frequencies. So your 38 lower sideband, I had six on here, I also had channel one. It also will scan um, the 919, however you have that set up, uh, for your dual watch. So you can have it scan your three memory channels and the 9 or 19 on the scan function. Uh, that's just one option of the scan function. Of course, you can have it scan all 40 if you're not inside um, the memory function. You can see I left the memory function by just turning the channel changing knob. I can re-enter that memory function by just selecting one of the memory channels. Now, let's go to the uh, Vox control. So if I uh, press the function button and press um, the, oops, there we go. So I press this once, a quick press, and I go to the mode button and press that once, it'll turn on the Vox control. As you can see, the radio is keen because I'm talking and I'm not keying the microphone right now. Oops, I should hold this over here a little further away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see that the radio is now keen and talking and doing its own thing, even though I'm not keying the microphone. That is voice activated control. The microphone you can see even over there is being keyed up. You can adjust your settings for this. So, quick press on the memory button, Vox button comes on, quick press, Vox goes off. Quick press on the function button, long press on the Vox should take me into the settings. You can set the levels for your Vox here. You can press the, oops, I jumped out of it. You can press this mode button again. It'll take you to the next setting and the next setting there. Basically those settings are for you to fine tune where you want the voice activated control of the radio. Um, The voice activated controls, not something I have particularly ever really used that much. Um, ham, ham operators do use it sometimes, but on a CB, it's handy if you can't key your microphone, if you just wanted to sit there and be lazy, I guess. You can definitely set it up so that it will only start working when you're a certain loudness. Um, but yeah, I, I don't necessarily know how many times I would personally use it. But that function is included in this radio. I believe that's everything that I've gone through. Um, I will show you the backside real quick and then I'll pop the covers and show you the inside adjustment points. All right, backside of this radio, <clears throat> you got your standard three pin power jack, fantastic. I'm so glad everybody is using the standard for this. Um, I've got so many of these cords these days from all my years of radios that it's nice that everything's just kind of standardized for power cords these days. Um, down below you've got an external speaker jack, you've got your PA speaker jack, and you also have a Vox uh, headset jack. So if you wanted to have a separate headset, and this is again where that Vox comes in, if you wanted to wear a headset while you're driving in a truck or at home if you were using this radio, you could use a nice headset and have it go through here and do the voice activated control option without having to key your microphone. You'll see your standard connection here for your coax. Radio is, says here, made in Vietnam. So let me pop the covers, I'll show you the adjustment points inside. All right guys, we took the cover off here, and nice thing about this radio, front firing speaker, you just take the top cover off and you've accessed the board. On a lot of radios that have a speaker on the bottom, you have to flip the radio over first, and then you have to remove the bottom cover that has the speaker in it, and there's gonna be wires running to the radio board. You always have to be careful that you don't pull the wires out of the board. There's usually a quick disconnect. On some radios, there's no disconnect. You have to unsolder them if you're going to work on it or just set it off to the side and be very careful. On this particular radio, no speaker on the bottom, so no wires, and you just remove that top cover and you have access. Uh, what I will show you is the AMC control. People often say, how can I turn up modulation on a radio? That's going to be your AMC right there. And these are little adjustable pots. So you have to have the right um, tuning tool for these. There's a bunch of different types of tools available in tuning kits. Uh, they often sell them as like TV tools and they'll have different tips on them. 
I definitely suggest picking one of those up if you're ever going to do anything inside of a radio. They are non-conductive. If you drop them inside the radio, it's not going to short out against your power wires and ruin your radio. So <clears throat> before you touch anything, make sure you have the right tool for it. The modulation control in there, the AMC, you can adjust that upwards and it will increase your modulation. Out of the box, the radio is not doing 100%. <clears throat> that is from the factory on purpose because they don't want to break the FCC rules. So they want to make sure all radios that get tested or pulled will pass the inspection, be under four watts and under 100% modulation just to be safe. So <clears throat> this radio out of the box wasn't doing 100% modulation and it wasn't doing a full four watts output. Um, the pots in here are not like the older pots in the Cobra 29s or Cobra 25s, those types of radios. Those ones were a little bit larger, of course, because it wasn't surface mount technology. And when you turn them, you would turn them one way or the other to go to minimum or maximum modulation. And then they would stop. These do not. When you turn these, if you keep turning them, they will go to maximum and just keep on going right back to zero modulation. So that is why test equipment is important when you're tuning these newer radios with the surface mount technology. You can't just go in there and turn it all the way one way like you would on the old radios. You have to set it and you need a meter and other things to be able to adjust your modulation. It's great to see it on a scope, make sure you're not clipping, all those types of things. But just be warned, if you keep turning these, they will just keep turning and turning and turning and turning and they will just go in a cycle from zero back up to 100% and then back to zero. Next one over is the ALC control. That would be your sideband uh, power output if you're going to try and turn up the sideband a bit on this radio, which out of the box I did as well. Uh, it wasn't doing a whole lot and then I tuned it up a little bit better and then it got up to what you would expect for a single final radio. The uh, AM power adjustment, it's got variable uh, AM power in it. You can get a little bit more out of the radio um, than what it's going to be doing, but I, I wouldn't really me recommend messing with it a whole lot for trying to get more AM power out of it. The single final on this radio, uh, you know, hitting about 12 watts on AM or sideband is really all you're going to need. If you pair this radio up with a amplifier or something like that, um, disclaimer of course, that's illegal as well, but a lot of people do that. If you do match it up, it'll match up well with like a RM uh, KL203, one of those little small ones. It'll match up really nicely. You don't want to try and squeeze every watt out of this thing. It's not a powerhouse. It's not a dual final radio. If you need those, they're available, 10 meter export radios. Um, but for a legal CB radio, this is a great model for that. And just don't expect it to be a powerhouse out of the box. We're testing out the new uh, President McKinley single sideband model, so we're just trying to get an on-air uh, check on this new radio. Well, if you're, if you're being honest, you sound good here on the coast of uh, Oregon. Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, be posting this with the review of the radio. We'll be uh, posting it probably next week or so. So, yeah, no, this is uh, CB Radio Magazine with the YouTube channel and everything. Yeah, we're doing good. We're just uh, actually testing out a new radio. It's uh, the President McKinley, and we're just trying to see how it sounds out there in DX land. Oh, Roger that. Yeah, I just saw that uh, radio on an ad not too long ago. It sounds good out here in Oregon, over. 4770, Oregon, over. Four, back quiet, 73 is buddy until we do it again. I don't know. Thanks there, uh, Rick. Uh, 2470, man. Sounding good up here. Hey, we're testing out a new radio from President. Uh, this is just a stock microphone. How's this thing sounding on the air? Yeah, 